Hello and welcome to another episode of Ram and Reva. In this episode I'm going to be talking about uh, a cricketer of the past who epitomized guts and courage. Of course, if you look at uh, the numbers that he churned up, you would perhaps tend to think that uh, they're not great, but uh, in the context of uh, how cricket was in that era, you got to give uh, that man a lot of credit. I'm talking about Anshuman Gaikwad who partnered along with Sunil Gaska in a few tests and uh, especially uh, Anshuman Gaikwad partnering Sunil Gaskar against the PSL West Indies fast bowlers the protection equipment that was available for a batter those days was nothing to write home about and as was the laws of cricket were concerned the bowlers could bowl as many bounces in over he thought fit at best the umpires would prevent the fast bowlers from bowling bounces at tail enders because uh, the only provision that the laws provided those days was uh, the use of intimidatory tactics which was all about not really bowling a barrage of bounces at the tail enders now the umpires would obviously have their own sense of judgment about the batting skills of the tail enders and if they felt that um, the tail enders uh, were not uh, reasonably good enough uh, they would uh, tell the fast bowlers not to resort to bowling bounces which came under the purview of intimidatory tactics. Anshuman Gaikwad stood up to the fearsome fast bowlers on away tours against the West Indies and also at home. He was uh, one of the main run getters in that infamous test match at uh, Sabina Park, Jamaica, where uh, Clive Lord resorted to the tactics of making his fast bowlers come from round the wicket and bowl uh, relentless bounces in order to try and uh, win the test match because india did extraordinarily well in 74 75 uh, after losing the first two test matches they squared the series and then in the last test match it was left to clive lloyd to ensure that uh, they forced the issue and uh, clive lloyd having uh, been subdued in the earlier test match where India went on to chase down a target of 400 plus in the fourth innings decided that uh, he needed to do something different and, and uh, he let his fast bowlers loose. There were a lot of injuries in the test match. In fact, Anshuman Gaikwad uh, suffered a severe injury on his ear but uh, that was uh, a kind of cricket that was played those days. And let's also not forget about the fact that cricketers of those uh, days played for the passion of it because there's not much of money in it. It was just a case of them going out there and giving their best because they enjoyed playing the game and uh, they were good at it. Anshuman Gaikwad uh, obviously uh, played uh, in 39 test matches, if I remember it right. But uh, nevertheless, uh, he was not finished once he retired from uh, international cricket. He served in a lot of capacities. Uh, he was the coach of uh, the Indian team at different times. And uh, he also served as a national selector. In fact, he did uh, serve uh, his time during my playing days. And uh, he also played alongside me. Um, that was the span of his cricketing career. He played uh, as uh, late as the late 80s and then uh, he also was a part of the CAC too. Currently, he is serving as the member of the Apex Council of the BCCI as a representative of the Indian Cricketers Association. Anjuman Gaikwad was uh, one who was easily approachable and uh, I remember he would uh, walk up to the junior cricketers and then uh, introduce himself and uh, make the youngsters uh, feel relaxed and uh, he would uh, assure them that uh, they belong to the side that, that they were selected for and uh, he was a man who got along well with everybody. The critical thing here is that uh, if you have played with somebody and then you've gone on to a uh, situation where you need to select players you got to really handle uh, those uh, positions really well. Anshuman Gaikwad was adept at it. He was um, one who 
knew how to really compartmentalize things he would uh, obviously talk very nicely to you but that did not cloud his uh, judgment uh, as a selector he also had to battle uh, his uh, eyesight deficiency as well in the sense that uh, he wore uh, glasses i remember anshuman gaikwad would uh, go out to bat in a floppy hat and uh, you'd also have that uh, tortoise shell frame glasses and imagine playing the quakes of those years michael holding and roberts uh, with uh, no helmet on and even the gloves were a bit of an apology those days and you just had a bat in your hands literally to try and uh, uh, handle and counter the fearsome fast bowlers he did it uh, with uh, great guts and uh, he always uh, used to tell me that uh, it was just a case of uh, him uh, uh, backing his own uh, ability and his own uh, determination because he said that he was not really talented naturally talented but he made up for it with a lot of guts and practice and uh, extraordinary self belief anshuman gaikwad obviously is um, so popular that when he released his uh, biography uh, a few weeks ago uh, the best and the most accomplished of cricketers in india went uh, for the function and uh, they obviously felt that um, he deserves all the support that he needs and uh, i'm sure that uh, that book will be a great success uh, and uh, serve the purpose in as much as anshuman gay got served uh, the purpose of a gutsy opener during his playing days Anshuman Gaikwad uh, personally has been a very good friend of mine and uh, we always got along well and uh, we generally have a lot of banter when we meet each other it is a pleasure uh, playing with you Anshuman Gaikwad and also knowing you because uh, you are uh, uh, fantastic uh, in terms of uh, talking about the game and also as uh, one who can be a, a great uh, guy to socialize with uh, i wish you all the very best for your book anchu and uh, hopefully we'll catch up uh, sometime very soon and have a great uh, time as we've always done in the past on that note i would like to sign off by saying until i catch up with you be good and take care